Hello again everyone, this is Jim from 100th Monkey Mushrooms and welcome to our video on how to use our new garden kit. We're really excited about this kit because there's so many applications that this can be used for. Now this first application of the garden kit, this is one where you grow on your own substrate in your own containers. Your substrate is the dry organic material that you are going to grow your mushrooms on. What your mushroom is going to use as a food source. There are literally hundreds of different substrates you can use on our website. We have a more comprehensive list. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you two different substrates that you might use and the reason I chose these two are because they're locally available. They were very easy to come by. The first one being uh, wheat straw. We are surrounded by wheat fields and so this is very easy to come by and also uh, sawdust. We have a milling company uh, not very far from here. A note about substrate choices. If you have access to a straw, wheat straw, barley straw, um, rice straw, we would definitely recommend using that. Especially if you are a beginner, it's the, the straw is just much more forgiving. It colonizes faster produces quicker um, than something that is very dense like uh, sawdust or coffee grounds. These work well, they just take longer, but if you have the option for a straw or a dried grass, choose that. It's just it's much more forgiving and user friendly for beginners. So now that I have my substrate chosen for my two different examples I'm going to show you, my wheat straw, my, my hardwood sawdust, it's now time to choose my container. There are literally hundreds, endless amount of containers that you can choose from to, to grow in, but here's some parameters about uh, what you choose. If you're going to use something very um, porous and very aerated like wheat straw, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of places air can move through, you can choose a very large container, and in this case, I'm going to use an entire five gallon bucket that I'm actually going to grow out of. Okay. Now if you use a, a something large like this, like a bucket, if it's deeper than eight inches, you have to put holes in it. And the reason being is that it needs to have some air exchange through there. If you have a very dense material like sawdust or coffee grounds, use multiple containers with a minimum of about one gallon each. These are gallon and a half nursery pots and I'm going to put about one gallon in each of If I fill this into a big container it's not going to get enough oxygen that's going to permeate through it. Also a little tip for growing whether you choose a large or small container is that if you put some holes in the side the oyster mushrooms really like to grow out of the side out of a small opening. They will grow off the top but they seem to do much better coming out of the side. Step three is heating your substrate in water. The heating process serves two functions. One, it eliminates the vast majority of microbial competitors. And second, it allows the substrate to absorb enough water to hold it throughout the next few months of production. There's a few different options to heating your substrate in the water. First option is to place your substrate in an old pillowcase using it like a large tea bag and submerging it into a large pot covering it with water with one to two inches of water above the top of the pillowcase and substrate and then heating it from there. You will need a heavy object to hold it down as it will be, it'll be buoyant. The second option is to also place the substrate into a pillowcase and place the pillowcase with the substrate into a heat proof container and then carefully pouring water that is 170 degrees Fahrenheit over the top until the substrate and pillowcase is submerged. The third option for heating your substrate is to use a series of smaller pots. Whichever way is easiest and safest for you, please choose that way. Heat the water to 170 degrees Fahrenheit and allow the substrate to sit submerged and covered for at least an hour. When you're, when after that hour, remove the pillowcase and allow it to drain for about 15 minutes. Then twist the pillowcase tightly and wring the excess water from the substrate. 
The wetness of the substrate should be that of a damp sponge. If you squeeze it tightly, the substrate should not produce any water droplets. Any standing water at the bottom of the container limits the mycelial growth and it greatly increases the chances that it will contaminate. Step 4. Inoculating your substrate. To limit any other contaminants, clean everything the pasteurized substrate will come into contact with, such as your hands, the growing container, the cooling table, with soap and warm water. And although this step is not necessary, you can hedge your chances by wiping all the surfaces with a clean paper towel drenched in isopropyl rubbing alcohol. This inoculation is the process of mixing the mushroom spawn into the substrate. As soon as the substrate is cool enough to handle, spread it out on a well-cleaned surface such as the table or a countertop to allow it to cool to room temperature. With washed clean hands, gently flip and re-spread the pile every 30 to 60 seconds to ensure that all the substrate is cooled to the room temperature. High temperatures can kill the mycelium. While you're waiting for the substrate to cool, open the bag of mushroom spawn from your mushroom garden kit and break it up into fine particles in a separate well clean container such as a large bowl, bucket, or pot. Continue this pattern of mixing and alternating layers of substrate and spawn until they're both used. End your layering with a half inch covering of spawn only. An alternate method is to spread out your substrate, allow it to cool, and take the spawn and pour it on top of it and mix it in thoroughly on your table and then put it into your container or containers. Step 5. Maintaining moisture. During the next 3 to 8 weeks, the mycelium from the spawn will grow onto, or another word for it is colonize, the substrate, its food source. This period is called incubation. To maintain adequate levels of moisture during this incubation time, put the container in a large trash bag. Leave the top of the bag untied and open, about the size of a golf ball, and just loosely drape it to the side. You don't want to completely tie or seal the trash bag because the air exchange is necessary. To ensure that the air can move freely around the substrate, keep the trash bag from touching the surface of the container by propping the trash bag with one or two sticks laid on top of the container. Step 6. Place the container in the dark. During the incubation period, place your container in a dark location that has a consistent temperature range from 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Step 7. Fruit your mushrooms. After two and a half weeks, begin inspecting the container daily for the formation of small mushrooms called primordia. When primordia are first detected, move your container to a location that has the optimal fruiting conditions. Determine the best location based on these criteria. First one, light. Oyster mushrooms do need light to grow, so choose a location that has at least enough light to read by, but is not in direct sunlight. Temperature. Consistent temperature range between 60 and 80 degrees is needed for product productive fruiting. Humidity. During fruit body production, a high level of humidity, 75 to 95%, surrounding your growing mushrooms will greatly enhance their size and weight. A simple way to achieve this high level of humidity is to fluff a clear trash bag, place it over the top of your container. This effectively creates a humidity dome similar to a terrarium. Using a spray bottle, mist clean water into the interior surface of the trash bag one to three times daily so that condensation droplets are continuously visible on the inside of the bag. Airflow. Cut 10 to 12 holes that are roughly a half inch in diameter all around the trash bag to allow air exchange. If need be, sticks, wires, pipes, etc. can be used to support to keep the plastic humidity dome from collapsing onto the container and substrate. Step eight, harvest your mushrooms. Generally three to five days after primordia first form, your mushrooms will be ready to harvest. Oyster mushrooms glow in clusters and the largest mushroom of the cluster is your indicator of when to harvest that entire cluster. As the mushrooms mature, the shape of the cap will change from a downward curved concave shape that will continue to open until it is flat and then will progress into an upward curved convex shape. 
When the cap of the largest mushroom in the cluster has flattened, the entire cluster is ready to be harvested. So thank you for watching and be sure to view our other videos on how you can use your garden kit to grow in your own garden beds and on totem logs. Happy growing!